hey hey good morning so if you're like oh my gosh so many women out there you may find that your weight loss journey is a bumpy emotional ride how so well you know it's like when everything is good things are good things are easy when things get hard holy cow do they ever get hard and i think you know what i really want to drive home today is why and i do this with my clients i do this i do this i talk about this ad nauseum okay <laughs> because um and i guess i'm gonna go right to the question that we got or right to the comment that we got so deanna this is for you you were definitely not alone when you shared this post or when you posted it and here's what you had to say here's what she had to say so new to the group first of all so glad you're in this space you guys this is such a safe space I mean first of all as the founder or leader of this space I've heard it all I've done a lot of it back when I was overweight and I've had to overcome um, so much of what we talk about in this space and you know Deanna you said I'm really struggling I've been trying to lose for at least a month but keep on yo-yoing back and forth it's becoming really hard to stay motivated I just want to give up and I don't know what to do anymore I mean hello has anybody else ever felt that way I think your yeah, hand up <laughs> baby hand up right like it's like holy yeah we totally get it and so here's the thing the problem and I Deanna, I don't know how tall you are I don't know any of those things about you but I'm gonna speak to what I have seen um, in terms of the, the women I've coached, the women who've been successful, what weight loss requires, and the biggest things that steer us wrong. I need paper. Uh, let me just grab that. Sorry, thought I had it. So when we're going on a weight loss journey, you have to understand that what so often we make these changes in our diet and how we're doing, and we want the immediate reward. We want the reward to just show up on the scale. And I think many of us women believe that a suitable reward is, you know, day to day, we want to see a pound drop. Like we want to see the weight go. We want to see if you start at whatever, 205 on Monday and you do really, really well on Monday and you have your protein and you drink your water. We want to see it go to 204. Right? And oh, if we see it go to 203, now we're really feeling good, right? So then Tuesday comes, Tuesday, Wednesday, maybe you weigh again on Wednesday and it, you see that it still says 203. And you're like, what the hell? What? But I've been working so hard. Yes, for two days. You have to imagine that fat is like a log, okay? A log does not combust immediately when you put it on the fire. You have to build the fire and then you got to keep the fire going. All right. So the problem that I see so often is that, well, there's two, the yo-yoing. So Deanna, I want to talk about what happens with yo-yoing. Um, basically we go to, we go to this. Okay. So this is called, this is, uh, uh, this is overeating. This is under eating. Okay. Overeating. We don't give a, we don't, we don't give a shit. We're going to do whatever we want. We want to be happy. We're good people. Uh, you've had a really hard day. You're really stressed right now. I mean, I'm, we've got a million reasons, excuses that we overeat. So when we overeat, by the way, um, our weight will also show that we are overweight. The two go hand in hand. So we're overeating and then we start to feel really crappy and we get really sad. So we immediately jump down to under eating, dieting, right? Dieting is going to be lower calories than what we need, extremely low calorie. Maybe you're also trying to work out a ton. And guess what? Our weight will drop initially when we go to under eating because now we're probably not drinking wine. You're not having sugar. You're not having as many carbs. You're paying more attention. Maybe you're also not just trying to under eat. Maybe you're also trying to get in some more protein. So we're going to see this weight drop here. But then the way that women approach this can be so rigid. It's a dieting mindset. It's so rigid. The rules, the lack of freedom, the lack of understanding your own metabolic reality and the metabolic cost of food. Right? What is the impact of every single little bite that we put in our body? You got to know because the body keeps the score. You cannot outsmart fat. You cannot wish it, want it, hope for it, or pray for it to go away. You got to burn it. And fat can only burn when you give it the right consistent signals day in, day out. So the problem with this is this is dieting. 
And this gets really hard. So then we go right back up over here to overeating. Maybe you had a stressful event. Maybe it's a really bad bit day. Maybe it's Thursday. Maybe it's girls night out, date night. Who knows? Once again, we go back to our excuses, reasons, justifications for why we're now overeating. So the minute we go to overeating, guess what happens again? Our weight will bounce right back up there too. So under eating, overeating, under eating, overeating. There we go. So now we have this beautiful, not beautiful, I'm teasing, um, yo-yo pattern. So what the hell, what do we do if we're not consistently overeating? And how do you lose weight if you're not dieting? And this is the work. This is why if all you're doing is focusing on the food, right? If you're not focusing on the emotional and the mental, right? The mindset work that's required in order to navigate and manage what it takes for you to be consistent and committed day in, day out, then your weight loss result is a fleeting, temporary little blip on a scale that gives you the high for the moment. And who knows, if you're like me, if I saw the scale go down, I'd go celebrate that by eating something that caused me to be overweight in the first place. Has anybody ever done that? Please tell me I'm not alone. So what we have to do here is we've got to take a look at the bigger picture. All right, so if you put, I mean, put it into the chat, if you're with me, good morning. Um, most of my clients have somewhere between 15 to 80 pounds that they're wanting to lose. So it's a, it's a big range, right? Uh, 15 pounds can make you feel not good in your body. 80 pounds can also make you feel not good in your body and have health implications and restrict your movement and impair your confidence and your self-esteem and the way you live your life and hold you back from doing all sorts of things you'd rather be doing, except you don't feel like it because you don't feel comfortable or confident. So this is what we're chasing here. We're not just, remember this, and I think, Deanna, you gotta remember, why are you wanting to lose weight in the first place? Like, I'm not so like, oh, you gotta come up with your big, deep why. I mean, you do need it, but you gotta take a look at what's it really about for you? What matters most about it? For me, I wanted to be a good role model for my kids. I wanted to feel good in a pair of jeans. I didn't want my stomach to be hanging over my, my waistband. I wanted to wear cute clothes again, but I more importantly wanted to show up as me. The bigger I got, the smaller my personality became. The bigger I got, the smaller my life became. And I wanted a bigger life. I didn't want to be big living a small life. I wanted to feel healthy and fit and confident and live a big life. And so my vision of why the change was worth it, of why giving up this cycle, I had to really connect to it so that I could stay committed when it got hard because it will always get hard. That's what it means to be alive. We are going, oh my God, we are going to have curveballs. I mean, if you've been me lately, have you had, I mean, if you had a curveball every day lately, um, my hat's off to you. It's, it's a lot and you have to go through it. There's no other way. You have to learn how to be resilient day in, day out, because if you're not, then like basically what happens is uh, we want to build a weight loss fire, right? So if there's seven, so a lot of times it's like seven days in a week, okay? We're looking to see a result you're nailing it. You are absolutely kicking ass with weight loss. If you see a decrease of about two pounds on the scale from Monday to Monday. Okay. So this is what this looks like from Monday to Monday. If you see two pounds down, you're doing amazing because in four weeks, that's going to be eight pounds in three months. That'll be 24 pounds. Now here's the caveat. If you're five, four and under, you need to adjust this and understand that anywhere between one to one and a half pounds, is also amazing. That's six, 12, 18 pounds in three months. If you do that for a whole year, oh, that is that 20, 40, 60, 80 minus six, that's like 74 pounds. Would you not love to lose 74 pounds? No, wait, I did the math wrong. Anyways, 18 times four, whatever, figure it out. Um, but the problem here is, okay, this is what this pattern looks like. Let me draw it. Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, Saturday, Sunday, Monday. You know what I see? I see women coming and they're like, okay, my motivation's high on Monday, high on Tuesday, high on Wednesday. Mm, not so much on Thursday. I'm going to start to, I'm going to go flatline here by Friday, Saturday, and Sunday. No, nope, they've got no motivation. So then what happens is this effort that you've put in here to create the weight loss effect is now negated by the lack of action taken here, which means on the Monday, you don't get the result you want. 
And then this lack of a result affects your motivation because you don't get the emotional fulfillment from seeing the reward which is given to you when you stay committed and consistent for seven days in a row. This is chasing Mondays. If you're chasing Mondays, you're going to make yourself batshit crazy. It's exhausting. It's like weight loss purgatory, trying so, 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 so hard for these four days, but usually doing some sort of under eating approach here. And then you can't do it because by the time you get to Thursday, Friday, you're exhausted. Stress is mounted. You can't handle the rigidity or the, the guessing, wishing, hoping, wondering if it's going to work for you. So you give up give up. So, so tell me, I mean, let me know what day do you kind of let yourself off the hook, right? Because if you know the day you let yourself off the hook, you've got information. The minute you have data about yourself, that means you now have the ability to change something. You now have the ability to change it. You get to go, okay, Friday. Friday is like my TSN turning point for the negative. I got to figure out what my winning strategy is for Friday so that I can have an amazing Saturday and Sunday because right here, the amount that we eat and drink in these three days will totally negate anything positive that was occurring in this. And it's the equivalent of building this beautiful fire. You, you start it, you get it going, you put fat on, and then essentially you go get a big bucket of cold water and you douse the fire. And then you're like, oh my God, I wonder why the fire went out. It's not warm anymore. Huh? I'm really sad and frustrated now. And yet somehow through our behaviors, we're metaphorically dousing out our own fire and fat loss stops. Why? Because the body is brilliant. The body can only do what you're asking it to do. And you're either asking it to gain weight, lose weight, or keep, stay the same weight. Fat cells get, fat cells get bigger, stay smaller, or stay the same size. To let them shrink, you cannot overeat. You need to nourish yourself. If excess comes in at one time, the body has no choice but to store it as fat. And this is why trying to starve yourself all day, but then you have a huge meal and you can't stop craving sugar or carbs at night and you eat yourself into oblivion. And then you try to get up and you're like, I'm gonna make up for it by being really good and not eating all day. Those strategies don't work. Those are old school dieting tactics. And so Deanna, all I wanna say is like, the work that's involved is don't, you can't give up. You can't, no one else is going to give you your own. Well, I'm going to try and give you some hope here, but you got to cultivate it within yourself and recognize that there's something deeper going on. And the minute you identify what that point of inconsistency is for you, you're going to be able to switch it, fix it, change it, approach it differently. And that, and you're going to have to keep building on it. You're going to have to, you know, figure out, okay, I fixed Fridays, but oh man, Saturday nights. Yes. This is why we do the inner work here and here so that as you focus on that food piece, the weight loss results become more consistent. You see that you get motivated by seeing what you're doing working for you and then you want to keep going. Okay. So, Please, please let me, you know, tell me more about you. Let me coach you. Let's get over this motivational or lack of motivational hump so that we can pick ourselves back up again and climb back up and get going because every woman deserves to create and live in the body she loves. Every woman, totally my belief. And if you're not right now, okay, you're either going to choose that and stay stuck or you're going to choose the change and both are hard. You just got to choose your heart. And this one, the one where you're choosing the change leads you to such a better place, but you got to be brave. You got to have courage to go after what you want. You got to know what you want and why you're doing it. And then it gets easier. I'll be back tomorrow morning. Bye for now.